Greetings, peeps. Today we're going to compare ground deploy solar with roof deploy solar. What are the pros and cons of each, and why do I have both? First, a quick little overview for those of you new to the channel or have not seen some of my other solar videos. This is my road trek. I have 300 watts of Renogy solar panels on the roof, and I have 200 watts of Renogy solar panels on the ground, combined total 500 watts. The ones on the roof are hooked up to their own solar controller. The ones on the ground are hooked up to their own solar controller. Both solar controllers go to a pair of Battleborn batteries, which I just installed, a combined total of 40 amps. Now I do have a supplementary generator. I have this Westinghouse 1200 watt that I supplement whenever there's bad weather. Now today I had fantastic solar. You can see, sky's not too bad. A Little bit of clouds. Yesterday it was stormy. I got no solar at all. I had to run my generator all day to get my batteries charged. That's one thing that a lot of people don't understand about solar. They think solar is the end all be all that put 2000 watts on the roof of your RV and a bunch of batteries. And that's all you'll ever need. You'll never need to run a generator. Let me tell you, if you spend any time at all in the West, there's a thing called monsoon season, which is happening right now, where it can be overcast, cloudy, and rainy for days on end. Uh, if you're in the Midwest, you know exactly what storms can be like. It could be, you can go five days without sun. Now, you'd have to have a really, really serious solar system to make it that long without a generator. Something that's probably way too massive for most RV use. Now, off-grid cabin, that's a whole other story. So why in the world do I have both ground deploy solar and solar on my roof? I've never seen anybody else in an RV have solar panels on the roof and put solar panels on the ground. What most people do is they'll do the roof solar and then maybe they'll have tilt brackets up there, which I do, and I'll show you that in a moment. Or they'll do ground deploy like this. Sometimes it's a suitcase kit by Renergy or something like that that they're using to charge their house batteries or they're, or they're using it to charge something like a Jackery, like a portable power station. So why do I have both? Because there's benefits to both, and I'm gonna explain that to you right now. First, the benefits of ground deploy solar. The number one benefit is that you can usually have a little bit more of it in a smaller vehicle. My van only has enough space on the roof for 300 watts of solar, but I need more. So I can actually carry a couple more panels in the back and put them on the ground, and that supplements my power and gets me where I need to be. Of course, the number one reason to have ground deploy solar is that you can aim it and put it anywhere you like. Let me show you what I'm doing here. You could see I'm shaded. So this is late afternoon. This is usually when it's the hottest part of the day. I intentionally parked by these trees so that at least half the van would be shaded. Now, the solar panels on the roof are still in the sun, but the angle's really steep at this point. They're not really putting out a lot of power. But the important thing is I wanted shade. Now go over here. This is clear all the way until about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and the shade from this tree will come over and hit the panels, but by then I'm not getting solar anyway. It's, it's not worth getting that last hour of sun. So the big benefit is you can put them in the sun while your rig is in the shade. And the other benefit is that you can tilt them depending on the season. And you can rotate them depending on the time of day. So generally what I do, sunrise is over here. So right around sunset, I'll come out here and I'll rotate these towards sunrise for the next day, then I forget about it until the next morning. Then sometime around lunch, I come out and I move the panels and I face them south, which is that way. Then around this time, which I just did before I started the video, I come out and I put the panels in their final position for the day, which is towards the west, and that gets the last few hours of sun. You can't do that with roof panels. If you have fixed panels on your roof, you might be able to tilt them, but you certainly can't rotate them. That's one huge benefit to having a ground deploy system. Now this solution of two 100 watt Renji panels is very cost effective. These panels you can get for around 100 bucks. So for $200, I have 200 watts of a supplementary solar. Now you could also could get a portable kit like a Renji kit. 
You can get the suitcase kits. They're generally about uh, somewhere between two and $400, depending on the brand name and the quality. But for the most part, you're gonna be spending 300 or more for a folding suitcase kit. And I could have done that. I could have went that route, spent the more money and got the suitcase kits because they do have built-in stands. But those stands aren't really adjustable. They're fixed at 45 degrees. So if it's in the summertime and you want the panels at 30 degrees, like mine are, mine are slanted more towards the sky than towards the horizon. That's about where you want it to be in the summertime. Now in the wintertime, I have it the opposite. I have them really high up at 60 degrees because the sun is really low in the sky. Can't really do that with a suitcase kit. And plus, again, they're more expensive. And the size was a problem for me because they're more square. They wouldn't fit in my cargo basket. And that's probably your next question. How do you store these suckers when you're in a van? I got this 59 by 24 by 24 cargo basket and the solar panels go on top of everything else inside the bag. And I have this cushioning and stuff. I'm not gonna show you right this minute, but I have all this cushioning and stuff in between the panels, keeps them safe. So yes, the full size, and these are not the compact panels. I think these work a little better than the compact panels. So I actually, these are brand new. Uh, I decided to get the full size panels because they do seem to put out a little more power than the compact panels. And these are actually a little more expensive than the compact panels. Don't ask me why. But let me show you my tilting mechanism. So on this solar panel, which is an older panel, I actually have a tilt bracket kit, which allows me, you can see, I can take the screws out and then I can move this bar up and down and I can raise or lower the angle. So like I said, I have it at about a 30 degree angle right now. Now this panel's brand new and I haven't had a chance to install the bracket yet, but what I'm doing temporarily, and it seems to work really well, is I just get one of these cheap, these are like 11 or $12 uh, plastic folding step stools and a bungee cord. You can see I have it bungeed and it holds it at a really good angle. In fact, I've had this set up in pretty high winds, 35, 40 miles an hour. And what I do, if I'm worried about the wind toppling it, I just put some rocks on it and that actually holds it down because it's bungeed. This works quite well because it allows me to still rotate the panels, tilt the panels, move them around during the day, but not have them pinned to the ground. Now, a few people suggested using tent pegs to tent peg into those holes. You see, they got these holes in the bottom. You could definitely put a tent peg in there, but do you see a problem with that? Now this soil is soft and muddy, so you can probably push a tent peg in almost by hand. But imagine if this was a harder surface, you couldn't get your hammer in here to put the tent peg down. I tried it. You have to kind of go at an angle and get it in there. And then what happens when you want to, when you want to move the panel? You have to pull the, the damn tent peg back out, move the panel, and then put the tent peg back in. So I've used tent pegs when it's gotten really, really windy, when I'm afraid they're gonna flip over. But even if they flipped over right now, we're on dirt. There's no big rocks, panel's not gonna break. I did break one panel in quartzite, really high winds, the gravel there was really big, really big stones. The wind flipped the panel over and broke it when it flipped over. I had a second panel break. When I was in a rush moving, I put it in the cargo basket and I put it in wrong. And when I cranked it down with my ratchet straps, it was too much pressure and it broke the other panel. So I actually lost two solar panels, which I donated to Heidi so she can play with them. She likes to, to tinker with things. And I ended up buying two brand new panels because I, I was getting sick of carrying around the panels. I'd use gloves, heavy gloves every time I moved them because I was afraid I was gonna get cut by the broken glass. So I'm back to five perfectly working panels and this solar setup has worked great. My new Battleborns charged today by noon, which is unheard of. Before, when I was using my lead acid AGMs, I'd have to get every, every watt of solar, every watt of solar. So what's the big negative to ground deploy panels? Well, as you probably guessed, they're a real pain in the ass to set up. I mean, every time I wanna break camp, I have to roll up all this cable. I have these attach points here. So I have all this cable, it's like 50 feet of cable or something that I gotta wrap up, put that in the basket. Then I have to, on this panel, you know, take the, the stool and the bungee. This one's even more of a pain because then I have to put it on the table upside down to untwist those knobs 
and put pack that all together for shipping. And they're not the lightest pedals either. I think they're, I don't know, they're just under 20 pounds a piece. So they're a little on the awkward side to maneuver. You can get smaller ones. The second downside is and something you may be worried about if you're boondocking around other people. Let me show you how many people I'm boondocking around right now. In fact, I could not be wearing pants and it wouldn't matter. This is how I like to camp, guys. I don't like to camp around anybody else. There's not a single soul within eye shot or ear shot of where I am. So I can make as much noise as I want, run my generator all night, do whatever I want to do. I don't really have to worry about theft. But if you left these panels out, you know, there's a possibility that if you weren't here, somebody would come by and steal them. And that is a real possibility. And that's a real serious concern if you have one of those three or $400 suitcase kits sitting outside. If you don't chain that thing up, it, can, it could grow legs. Okay, what about roof solar? Almost everybody in an RV who does solar puts panels on the roof, tilting or untilting. Now these two rear panels do not tilt. They are in fixed position. But this front panel tilts forward. I always park with my nose towards the south so I can tilt this forward. Really only need to do that spring, fall, and winter. In the summer, I just leave it flat. But to get the most efficiency from the solar panel, you should tilt it towards the sun if you can. Now these rear ones have bypass diodes in them. So if they're shaded, the front one still puts out power. For those of you who might be thinking, well, if you don't tilt them all, you're not gonna get all the power. Well. I already tested it. I shaded the back ones. The front ones still put out 85 watts. So they have bi bypass diodes built in. So what's the benefits of having roof solar like this? Well, first of all, it's fixed. You don't have to worry about it. It's up there. It works all the time. It's not something you have to set up. It's just there. It just does its thing. That's what most people want. They don't want something they got to think about or worry about. They want it just to work. And that's the big benefit to the roof panels. They work all the time, morning to sunset. It doesn't matter where you're at in the country, you're gonna get some kind of solar as long as it's not super gloom and doom, thunderstorms, you're gonna get some solar. And this is a great way to trickle charge your batteries. Unlike the ground deploy units, which you kind of have to set up and rotate around, that doesn't work very well when you're traveling. Um, I noticed when I was traveling and I was driving around, my alternator only puts out 13.6 volts to my batteries. My batteries need 14.4 to fully charge. So the big benefit to having solar on the roof is that while I'm driving, my alternator is putting out 13.6 volts, the solar is putting out 14.4. So my solar will actually top up the batteries where driving, I'd have to drive like 24 hours to charge my batteries. Or in this case, I could drive a couple of hours and with the supplementary solar, my batteries are topped up. Of course, another benefit to having solar on your roof is that it's much more difficult to steal. Now, I've actually heard of people reporting that when they were urban camping, that sometimes people at night would climb up on their roof and try to steal their solar panels. That's pretty crazy. There's druggies out there who will uh, try to rip the solar panels off your roof just so they can buy more drugs. But it's much less likely, uh, especially if you have a van, that somebody's gonna climb on your roof and try to take your solar panels. Now, one of the downsides to having solar on your roof is that it is a fixed position. If you wanna park in the shade to keep your rig cool, you're gonna lose all your solar. So you have to make a decision. Are you gonna park in the sun so that you can have solar? or you're gonna park in the shade to keep your rig cool. Or you can do what I do and have ground deploy panels that supplement your battery and then just run your air conditioning off a generator. Uh, that's one of the things I do. Like if it's hot, like today it's, it's okay, but if I wanna run my air conditioner to stay cool, I just turn on my generator. My generator will power the air conditioning while my solar charges the batteries. And that's the really cool thing about solar. It'll work independently under 12 volt system from your charger, which is in your RV. Of course, another downside to the fixed panels on your roof is that you can't rotate them. Uh, in some cases, if you buy a very expensive tilt kit, the tilt kits usually cost more than the solar panels. Uh, if you wanna get a good one, like uh, AM Solar has a tilt kit, it's like $120. that allows you to uh, adjust the panel and take the panel off completely very easily. Uh, you, can get, you can get some solar tilt kits cheaper. I think mine cost about $80 to build. And the solar panels themselves are 100 bucks. So you're, you're spending almost as much on the tilt kit as you are on the solar. Then of course, the downside to a tilt kit on the roof of your vehicle is that you have to climb up there and 
do the work on your roof. Now on the van, it's not a big deal. I have this ladder, but it's still a pain in the butt. I have to get this ladder out and get up here, pull the knobs out, and then tilt the panel. Now, if, you're on, if you have a, like a large RV and a bunch of tilt kits, you have to do this for all your solar panels. It might take you a half an hour to tilt all your panels towards the south. And then you're forced to park your rig in a certain way. See, how I have this set up, I don't have to park towards the south if I don't want to, but I choose to just because I can protect the front of my rig better. I like to have my bedroom in the back on the north side where it stays cooler. I can kind of decide, especially in the summer, to park any way I like. Now, in the wintertime, it'd be more important that I park my nose towards the south because I have this tilt panel up front and that'll give me a supplementary power. Now, I've had several requests. People want to know how my solar system is set up. So I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to try and be brief. I have these three solar panels up here wired in series. Now, I used to have them in parallel, but I switched them over to series when I figured out with the MPPT solar controller, it's a lot more efficient. And that's a big thing. If you're having more than 100 watts of solar, you really should be using MPPT solar controllers because they handle the voltage better, especially if your panels are in series. Now, I have these three set up in series, and they generally put out close to 60 volts. All three of these panels go into their own solar controller, which is the Renogy Commander. That's the one I installed two years ago. It has an MT50 monitor up front that allows you to change the parameters, program it, and see what kind of solar you're getting. Now, the two wires from those three solar panels come down here into my air conditioning vent. So I didn't drill any holes in the roof to run the wires. They come into the air conditioning vent and they go into the cabinets inside. Then from inside the cabinet, it runs down the side of the wall underneath the bed. Now I can show you in this next scene, when I installed my battle worn batteries, I did a little video on my two solar controllers. So we'll show you that right now. I have a brand new Renogy Rover 20 amp MPPT that I'm using for my outside ground solar. This down here, if you've been a long time follower, you saw me install this over two years ago. This is the Renogy Commander MPPT 20 amp. Now, this one has profile for lithium, and it says it can bring lithium back from the dead. Like if you completely draw your battle warns all the way down to where the BMS shuts off, this will actually turn them back on. This one will not, but I have this program the same as this, so both of them will work together to charge the Battleborn batteries. The way I have this set up right now is that it's actually uh, portable. I can disconnect this controller from my system and take it with me somewhere else. And I kind of like that option. Now this here is a wire that goes to the Bluetooth controller. So I actually control this and I can monitor this from my phone or tablet. So this one runs the two ground panels, and this one runs the three roof panels. Now this one's connected to an MT50 controller up front. For those of you that don't know, this is the MT50 controller from Renogy, and I already have it programmed for lithium. Now I can turn off all of my solar with this little red switch. That's on, that's off. That cuts off power to both controllers. So say I don't want solar to come in. I'm on shore power right now. I don't want the batteries to overcharge, for example. Or say I'm working on the system like I am right now. It allows me to shut them off. Now over there, I do have a switch that allows me to turn off all 12 volt power to the rig. I'm gonna be doing that soon, as soon as I put my Battleborns in. That's why I have this open today. I'm putting some new Battleborn batteries in, but I also wanted to permanently mount this controller so it's not flapping around back here. The last month or so, it's just been sitting here, and I kind of want to mount it permanently. So I think I decided I'm just going to mount it to the side in here, and this is where I have it all plugged in. So this is where the, the battery power comes from, and then we got the solar power here. So really, all I have to do is plug this in. This goes to the battery plus and minus, and my PV plus and minus with the solar panels, which I just have this, these two MC4 connectors. And those MC4 connectors go outside. And I like the fact that it's portable. Like, I can take my solar panels and this controller with me somewhere, a remote campsite or whatever. Say I'm camping with somebody else. I could take that stuff with me and use this to like charge my Jackery or other batteries or just to have a couple hundred watts of solar somewhere else. Or if there's something wrong with this, it's easy to remove. I don't need to like take the whole bed out and deal with it. 
So I think I'm just gonna mount it on the side here and get done with it because I really want to get to installing these batteries today. Now you, you might be wondering this, this wiring mess here, where does all this go? So this goes to the MT50. I have these two wires here that go up the wall and then through here, out the grill outside, out the back, and that goes to my solar panel. So I did not have to drill any holes outside. Then I have two wires that just go to my batteries, which that's simple enough. And that's how it works. I don't have the load hooked up, but I do have this MT50. This wire goes all the way across the van to the other side over there and up on the wall. Hopefully that explains how I have the controller set up inside. Now for my ground deploy solar, that Renogy lithium controller that you saw me uh, installing, the wires run out the side of the back door. Again, no holes drilled in the vehicle. It runs in between the rubber gasket, comes out the door, and that's where I have it set to plug into these extension cables. These two panels together put out about 40 volts at maximum. So it does uh, transfer along the cable no problem with very little loss. Typically get on a good day somewhere around 160 to 180 watts on those two panels. And then on the roof, I've, I've seen it as high as 270, 275 watts just for the three roof panels. But that's perfect sun, no overcast conditions. Now my final supplementary solar is the Solar Saga 100 panel from Jackery, which I have magnetically hooked to the front of my van. This actually charges my Jackery Explorer 500 separately. I don't charge the Jackery off my main power system in the van. I let the power system in the van charge the Battleborn batteries. Well, this 100 watt solar panel charges the Jackery by itself. I have the Jackery safe and sound inside, and I just, again, I just run these cables through the door, and I can control the Jackery inside where it's safe and sound, away from prying eyes, away from the weather. But this works really great. It charges, the, the 100 watt panel charges the Jackery uh, after I use it overnight in a matter of a couple hours. So now that you saw my ground and roof combined solar setup, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I'm sure I forgot to cover several topics. I just did this one off the cuff, no scripting. I always forget things, but then you guys ask me in the comments anyway. So if you like the video, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If you are interested in the Solar Saga 100 solar panel, which can be used to charge things other than the Jackery, see my review video on that. You can get 70 bucks off right now. This is not out of stock. This is one of the things that Jackery has not run out of stock yet. So if you want to get the Solar Saga 100 solar panel, use, use the promo code HOBOTECH S100 at the checkout on Amazon. Use my link in the description. Get 70 bucks off of this. It's a great portable solar panel. It does have a stand built into it. So if you want to put it on the ground and put it on a stand, I find it easier just to magnetically hook it to the van hood, which is like almost a perfect 45 degree angle. So it allows me to get the most sun during the day. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Randall Fjordheim, Army Golf Guy, Joe Lazaro, Pat.